Now, Mark Harper, the Transport Secretary, has been very, very patiently waiting for this interview. He's also the Conservative MP for the Forest of Dean. Mr Harper, I tell you what, you've drawn the short straw. Why aren't we seeing Richard Holden, the party chairman, out this morning? Why are you having to do his dirty work? Doesn't the party chairman need to consider his position, having presided over the worst local election results in over 40 years? Well, I'm sorry you're disappointed you've got me, uh, Camilla, even though I've been waiting here patiently, as you said. No, I, look, Richard Holden was up and down the country with all of our candidates from, from one end of the country. He was incredibly active. And, the, and our people in the field also had incredible support from our hard-working team at CCHQ as well. So, no, I don't agree with you about that. I think all Conservatives now need to get behind the Prime Minister, as the Chairman said uh, in his in, uh, article this morning. Um, and take that message to the country. We see from mm. the analysis that experts have done that the, the results show that the position is closer than the polls are suggesting. So it's, everything is to fight for for the next election, and we're absolutely up for that fight. Just putting your leg, by the way, it's always delightful to see you on a Sunday morning. I just think that Richard Holden should consider, consider his position. i tell you why, because Oliver Dowden resigned when he presided over much better local election results from this. And it's not just criticism, by the way, of how the local elections have been managed. Let's look at the picture in London. I mean, I've had quite a few people contact me to say how shambolic Conservative Party headquarters is management of Susan Hall's campaign was. You've We've got Tory MP Paul Scully saying yesterday that the Tories had run a, quote, incredibly underwhelming campaign. What's, it, this is not good enough. Well, look, in London, I think Susan should be very pleased with the campaign she ran. It was much closer than both the polls had suggested and lots of commentators thought. She was focusing on the issues that mattered on the doorstep, to, on transport, uh, on focusing on crime, which is a really important issue in London. But obviously, with the national polling situation, as it were, it, it was a very difficult race. But she was chosen by uh, London Conservatives. I think she ran a very good campaign. I worked very closely with her uh, on a number of issues, and I think she was focused on the issues that mattered. But with the national situation, uh, the polling as it was, um, it, it was difficult. But it was a much tighter result than many people had thought at the beginning of the campaign. So all credit to her. I know, but because it was much tighter, that makes the kind of lack of uh, enthusiasm behind your candidate all the worse. If you'd actually put some rocket fuel up Susan Hall, she might have won. And yet we find out yesterday... I can't quite believe this, but the PM himself didn't actually vote for her in the London mayoral election. Why? Well, look, I was, just on your point about the campaign, look, I, I was out with Susan on a number of occasions. Transport was one of the really important issues in London. Uh, I felt as a cabinet minister, I went out and supported her. I was out on the, uh, on the doorsteps with her. I was out campaigning on the issues that mattered. So uh, I put a huge amount of support into that campaign and she worked incredibly well. So look, uh, I, you know, we did, we did our best. It was a tough result. It's worth just saying, you know, the last time these seats were fought, uh, four years ago. We had the vaccine bounce. Those were the best set of election results since 2008. That was a high water mark. These were always going to be difficult results uh, know, for an but... incumbent government. But it's always disappointing to lose hardworking Conservatives across the country. I'm not going to pretend that, that it wasn't disappointing. But the important thing now is we focus on the general election campaign. As I said, the national vote okay. share, the, the things that the analysts do show that it's closer than the polls, which means it's all to play for and we've got to now set out the choice for the country and continue to focusing on delivering on the country's priorities. All right, but the PM not voting for Susan Hall in the London mayoral race, I mean, I'm just quoting from the government's own website here that you are allowed to vote if you've got two different addresses in two different council areas. You're allowed to vote in both areas in local council elections police and crime commissioner election and mayoral elections. So is the Prime Minister ill-informed or could he just not be bothered to support Susan Hall? Well, look, the Prime Minister voted uh, for his uh, candidate at his home in North Yorkshire by post and he was out supporting Susan on the campaign trail and absolutely got behind her. Um, but and he didn't vote for her. He didn't manage to, to get her over the line in London. He voted in North Yorkshire for his, he could have voted in London. his home address in North Yorkshire. 
He could have also voted, well, he voted in London. In his local address in North Yorkshire. And he was absolutely backing Susan. He was out on the campaign trail with her and made it very clear she had his full support. Transport Secretary, sorry, let's just nail this down. Did he not know, did his team not know that he could also vote in London or could he just not be bothered? Look, I haven't discussed this particular matter with him. I know he voted for, by post for his local candidate in North Yorkshire uh, at his home address there, and he was out on the campaign trail with Susan on a number of occasions and was backing our candidates up and down the country. OK, so we can at least admit, even though we don't know the reasons, that the idea of the Prime Minister not voting for his own London mayoral candidate is a shambles. No, he voted, for, he had voted at his home address in North Yorkshire for the local candidate there. And he was out on the campaign trail with Susan, uh, with our mayoral candidate and with council candidates up and down the country, uh, as you would expect. He's out every week with our hardworking MPs and our hardworking candidates up and down the country, setting out what we're delivering and what we're focused on delivering and also setting out the choice that will be in front of the country at the general election. That's what he's focused on doing uh, every day of the week. That's great, but he and Number 10 have made a mistake. They could have voted for Susan Hall and they didn't. I just want you to accept that, that they've made a really big error there. Well, look, I've, I've set out the position. I haven't, haven't hidden from it. And I made the point that you were trying to say he wasn't supporting Susan Hall. He was out campaigning for her through the elections and made it very clear she had his full support, uh, as, he, as he did for our candidates up and down the country. He was crisscrossing the United Kingdom, campaigning for candidates uh, in okay. every part of the country, as you would expect him to do as leader of the party. I can't, I can't pin it down. He's crisscrossing the country, but he's not crisscrossing a box on his London mayoral candidates list which is bizarre. Um, you are well, saying, I'm sure, that he needs to stick to the plan. There's other Conservative colleagues like Suella Braverman saying that he needs to change course urgently. You must accept that you need to do something very, very differently if you're going to win back people who are now thinking about voting for reform, not just in locals, but in the general election. Well, look, let me just pick that last point up, first of all. If you look at the election results, um, what was very clear about it was for conservative, former Conservative voters, if they vote reform, what they actually get are uh, Labour candidates getting elected. So that's a lesson for the election. And then you get a government which does, uh, which does none of the things you want it to do and actually does things you don't want it to do. So that would be my message on reform. On the plan, look, we've set out a plan that is about the priorities of the public. So that's about reducing inflation. Now that plan is working. Inflation is down to 3.1%. It was 11% yeah, when the Prime Minister You're took over. You're not reducing immigration, but have, though. But we, have further, but we have further to go. On stopping the boats, we have actually reduced the number of people coming to Britain illegally by a third over the last year. But 711 people came in on the Wednesday alone. Us to do... Well, yeah, but you've got to look at it over a reasonable period. Over a year, we've reduced it by a third at a time when across the European Union the number was actually going up. Now, I accept, completely accept, there is more to do. We fought really hard to get the Rwanda legislation on the statute book, opposed every step of the way by the Labour Party. Um, and now that legislation is on the statute book, we've got to get the flights off and have a steady rhythm of them through the rest of the year mm. to act as that deterrent to stop people coming. The public will judge us on whether that's successful. Uh, and so there is more work to do. So, look, I would say... We have made some success on the plan. We've, say, driven down inflation. We've reduced the number of people coming here illegally by a third. And importantly, picking up Robert Buckland's point, part of our plan is also about reducing NHS waiting lists, showing that success on public services. Again, a lot of progress made, but I would accept there is more to do, and that's what we've got to focus on through the rest of this year, and then show the choice that going for a Labour Party which doesn't have a plan to deal with any of those things would take us in the opposite direction and go back to square one. And that will be what we have to campaign on and get behind the Prime Minister as he sets out that argument uh, in the rest of this year. All right, Mark Harper, you've been the Tory party's Jeff Boycott this morning. Done a good job, well batted. It's not been easy for you, so I respect you for having waited for 10 minutes for coming on and then giving us some response to the calamity that we've witnessed over the weekend. Thank you very much indeed. Well, as I mentioned last week, 
I don't like to play my own trumpet, but nobody else will, so I may as well. I've been nominated for a Trick Award for my interview with the legendary broadcaster Alistair Stewart about his dementia diagnosis. If you didn't see it, you can see it on the GB News website. But what I really want you to do is vote for me and my good, mor- uh, good morning, my good uh, my GBN colleagues nominated at the Trick Awards. So please visit, listen to this carefully, poll dash trick dot org dot uk you can get your phone you can use the code on the screen you know it's all very newfangled you know what to do just vote for us because the public votes count and this is an award ceremony that isn't decided by the establishment that gives all of the awards to people that don't really deserve them and none of the awards to the people that do so please do vote thank you very much